I have the privilege of talking to you about something that I like to do. Um, a lot of times I go around, um, it's about every other Sabbath, I, I travel to, we have, we, Southeastern is a large conference, so there's a lot of things happening. I'm sure that's also the case in Southern. I'm not as aware of all the things that happen. <clears throat> but a lot of times when I go to churches, I show up with a suitcase. And um, church members always chuckle at me when I come with my carry-on piece, and they're like, you're moving in? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm just here to take some pictures. So I come with a carry-on piece because I have all this camera equipment. And it's really nice, it's really gorgeous, but at the end of the day, it's also pretty big and pretty clumsy. So we're going to talk a little bit about photography. Um, do we have the clicker? We're going to be talking about photography, and I am not going to be talking about all the equipment I, I lug around with me when I go to places. Instead, I'm going to, but I do get this question. So I have people doing, doing my time. Got it. Thank you. Um, during the time that I'm there, people, you always have the people that are interested in technology. So the people come up, they're like, ooh, I want to see what lens you have. I'm really fortunate. Um, a, f a year ago, we purchased, or a few months, uh, eight months ago, we purchased a really, really nice lens. So I now look like a sports photographer because I have a lens. I didn't bring it here, but it's a two to four hundred. Um, it needs a monopod because it's so heavy, um, and I can get some amazing pictures. And so I have people that are like, "Ooh, can I look at your, this equipment or what do you have here?" And then I ine inevitably get this question. So eventually I will say, this is really nice stuff. This belongs to the conference. And then they're like, well, what do you own? <laughs> and my response to that is this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do with you guys today, as much as I love photography and I have beautiful equipment to work with, there's amazing things, literally amazing things that we can do with a cell phone. I'll go through this. I hope this will come through. I know we have lighting issues. It's not dark enough to see all the images. So I, I, for, forgive me for, for, I hope you will be able to see some of the things. Not all the images are actually my images, but I would say about 85% of the images. Um, I actually wanted to give you images that I shot with my iPhone to illustrate some of these points. So a few of the, the stock images um, I think are evident. Um, they're not shot with, uh, I don't know what they were shot with. But a lot of, uh, all of my personal pictures I added in here was specifically with you guys in mind to actually say, this can be done with a smartphone. So um, we, we've been talking a little bit today about story, right? So I want to see how can we leverage the tools that we have to be able to share your story. In this case, to, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, the visual story. And, then, and more specifically, as I already mentioned, we're going to be talking about the smartphone. There we go. Um, Chase Jarvis is an incredibly well-known photographer. And he's, he shoots with, he, he's sponsored, he shoots with professional grade equipment. But he once said this quote that I think is really, really amazing. The best camera is the one that is with you. <laughs> you can be wherever you want to. So I like going outdoors. I like hiking, for example. And um, there's no way that I'm going to carry 30, 40 pounds of equipment with me just in camera equipment. Would it get the nicer shot? Definitely. Is it going to be breaking my back? Most definitely. So I'm going to avoid trying to do that. Um, so I'm going to go through a few different things. I think one of the things that we need to look at when we, when we look at, when we think about maybe the, the, the mobile device, maybe we need to rethink the, the, the element. I think for many years, um, because of the evolution of the smartphone, we have maybe not respected the, the capacity of what the phone can do. So there's a part of me that says, we really genuinely have to respect what we can do with the tool that we have in front of us. Um, if you have any phone that is um, younger than the fa past four or five years, um, you will have, a f and you have a smartphone, you will have an amazing camera uh, on the front or the back of it. Most likely, the, in most cameras, the back camera, the one facing away from you, is the better one than the one that's facing you. 
but you have equipment in your hand. I mean, some of the cell phones also have a nice price tag with it these days. But you have a piece of, you have a tool in your hand that is incredibly powerful. So I'm going to give you just a few tips to deal with the, with the actual device, and then we're going to talk about composition a little bit in the second part of this presentation. First of all, what you should know, so um, let me maybe start with this. For Android users, I'm going to apologize. This is going to be a little bit more on the iPhone because that's what I'm familiar with. So my apologies to those that have HTC, Samsung, or, or the Google Plus, or any of those other cameras. But the principles are still there. They still apply. So just keep in mind, I know the iPhone. I don't know the Android platform that, uh, at all, actually. But one of the things you should know, you should know how to, so this is the screenshot of the iPhone um, camera app. You should know how to operate that, what, what it means. So for example, if we look at this, um, we have here um, the ability, the, the camera with the, the, um, with the, not circle, but like the, the arrows, um, that's the ability to be able to rotate your camera. You have the live option, which in this case it's yellow. It's difficult to see, but it's actually turned on. We have HDR. We have the flash button that you can turn off or turn back on. And then on the other side, you have different menu options. But be aware, whatever your camera app is, and you can sometimes also buy third-party camera apps that are even more specific if you want to get more details. But you can actually do all the pictures I'll show you today. I shot within the generic app. I didn't buy a third-party app to be able to do any of these pictures. Second of all, this is a micro cloth. Sorry, it's a little difficult to tell. But clean your device. When I showed you, when I told you what I use personally a lot of times to take pictures, I pulled this out of my pocket. When I pull out my camera, my camera has a lens cap. So keep in mind, these things we pull in, pull out, we lay them down, the camera is exposed. So if you want to get the best quality, regularly clean your lens. I know it's a simple thing, but uh, one smudge can really destroy the best picture just because something is across um, that you didn't plan for. So regularly, a piece of advice, clean your lenses. If you know you're going to shoot multiple pictures intentionally, then clean it before you start the day. Optical versus digital zoom. You guys have seen this. Um, some phones in the last year or two have created that two lens idea. We have like the 1x, 2x type of deal. Um, it is really nice with the digital, with the DSLRs to be able to put a different lens on there. We don't have that option really with the smartphone. There are some add-ons that you can buy. Some of them work better. Some of them don't work as great. But for the most part, the phone, use the phone what it is. What you will see here, it's the same picture of a zebra head. One is clear, one is cropped. The suggestion is never use the digital zoom. Or know that if you use it, it's going to be distorted. So recently, I used the, digi the digital side of it because I really wanted to have something, and I knew I would never show it to anybody else. It was a memory piece to myself because I was watching it was a sports event, and I wanted to see somebody, and I wanted to just capture the moment of a particular player, and the camera could not get close enough, my phone. So I was willing to sacrifice the quality. But when you are thinking about taking pictures um, for that you want to submit somewhere, let's say the recorder, or if you want to post it online, it is smarter to take the picture in the original format and then crop in. You will have a higher resolution if you do it that way than if you start with the digital. So I try 99% of the time, I do not use the digital option. You zoom on your smartphone are the two legs that God gave you. You just have to walk up to the object. So that's the difference. So instead of being able to sit back and be able to take a picture at the back of the room with a long lens, you now just have to walk up and it might get into somebody's personal space to be able to take the picture. But if you want to have that picture, that's what you have to do for the smartphone. Stabilization. You can, there's moments when it's really good to be able to actually have the camera really, really still. So there's certain devices, certain um, tripods, mini tripods that you can get for the mobile device. Um, or if you're shooting a video and you want to actually stabilize that, we're not going to talk too much about video, but um, you want to have it as stable as possible so you get rid of the shakiness and um, 
distortion. distortion. Flash, the other day I was at my home church, um, and it's a larger church, and I kind of laughed. I was sitting on the platform, and halfway down the aisle, I saw somebody taking a picture of their, their child doing special music. It was the kids' group that was doing special music. And for the entire element, they were halfway, two-thirds um, through, so they were a good distance away from, from the children. They had their little flash on from their camera. And I thought, you're wasting a lot of ba battery because it does nothing. I use my flash for primarily one purpose. That is if I'm trying to find my car keys. <laughs> That's about the extent. Like, I very rarely use it. Um, the, there's many, there are applications for the flash. I have used my flash actually one time when I was doing a video shoot and I didn't have enough light that I actually used it as my fill light. Um, but again, when I take pictures, I try to stay away from flash. Flash a lot of times creates very harsh lighting. Um, so just keep that in mind. I, I don't use it very often. Unfortunately, you can't see it, but um, this is one of my personal pictures. Um, this is a, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Um, if you're outdoors and you're trying to take a picture of, um, of people, the best advice that I have, so this is an event, this was last year, we, we had a family celebration, we got together, and um, it was in the middle of the day, and we wanted to commemorate the, the event with a family picture. And we knew it wasn't professional grade, so I actually took this with my cell phone, so we knew it was just for the, for the memory's sake, but in order to get a picture where you don't have harsh lighting, if you look in the background, you can very clearly see here in the grass, this is dark, very clear, a black line, going into the green. That you can see. But what you, unfortunately you can't see is if you look at the faces, maybe you can see it a little bit, it's even lighting because we actually put everybody under a tree. So now I'm using diffused light. Basically, the, the harsh light of the sun cannot come straight through. It's diffusing the light, and so the faces are actually not, there's no hard shadows on the faces. So you can sometimes, even outdoors, in the middle of the day, try to figure out how to work with lighting situations. Here's another example. This was my, my grandmother, same trip. Um, I was taking pictures. She had a conversation with my brother, and it was the evening sun that was just coming down, like that golden hour, as photographers like to say. She was standing there, and all of a sudden, like she, she had this glow about her. Um, and so I was able to just capture her. Um, it's completely dark behind her. There's a little bit of light right here, but um, if we saw the contrast a little bit better, it's completely dark behind her. Um, but she's lit incredibly well, and that's just because she happened to be standing in the doorway and the sun was hitting her straight in the face. So sometimes natural light, if you know how to angle, uh, the, or how to place the subject, or if they happen to be in the right spot, this was not a forced or coerced uh, photo shoot. This was more like I saw it because she just stood there. Um, you can get some really gorgeous pictures. The other thing you want to really make sure when you take pictures, get the focus right. Uh, it's really easy to, to, to uh, it's easy to miss it, and when you do, it's really frustrating, right? Because you're like, here's the thing I wanted to get, but the person, let's say you're taking pictures at a church, but the two rows behind the person is what actually is in focus. And that whole picture, unfortunately, was almost for nothing. Um, or it may have been for nothing. So double check your focus um, on all the cameras that I know. Uh, phone cameras, you just tap on and be as precise as possible. Tap on the face, don't tap on the chest. Like um, what we want in focus is typically eyes. So if you, on, on DSLRs, when I focus and I have, uh, I can see the full face and it's a really close up portrait shot of somebody, you want to focus on the eye. Um, if it's not uh, with phone cameras, I can't choose it because it's a square, I just choose the face. So. Um, touch the, uh, on the screen, touch their face so that the camera makes sure that that's the most accurate, precise point. It's a little bit difficult to, to see, but um, there's a little bit of a depth effect here. You will see it's blurry at the top. In the middle here, it's a little bit more in focus, and it gets really blurry. Depth effect is something that you can really work with. It's a beautiful effect. It's a really nice way to be able to actually um, the iPhone has the thing that they call the portrait mode. Uh, unfortunately, it's digital, so there are some issues, and maybe I'll be able to show that to you guys later. But um, 
depth effect can add some really nice, or it's, we also use it the bokeh effect. If you're into photography, that's another way of saying that. Um, it creates that really nice, soft background. You have the very clear face, the very clear subject, or the object, whatever you're, you're, you're taking pictures of, and then a very nice, blurred out background. And then be patient. Here's a picture I took. Um, I was traveling with my brother, and we had, we had time. So we were actually walking through a city. And we happened to run across um, a wall. It's a red wall. There's um, a bright blue. Um, mark. So this is red. Here's bright blue. And then this is green. The barn door uh, on the, the sliver that you see is green. And we saw that. And it was really interesting because of the light that just kind of naturally came down. And we spent about 10 minutes just at this place wedged between two cars just looking at what was going to happen. And sure enough, what ended up happening, the next picture is the picture that I got, and I think it was one of, it was, I would say, the nicest picture I got from this vacation trip, was we waited for things to happen. And this is what happened. Unfortunately, you can't see it quite as much. We waited, and we realized here's an alleyway, and here's a boy that comes out with a scooter, and in the meantime, on the opposite side, there was a dog that laid down, and they're facing each other. So it's almost this perfect idea. This kid is traveling in this direction. The dog is looking at this, and at some point, they will intersect, either by eyes. So it ended up by, by, by sitting or standing there for a few minutes. I happened to run into a picture that didn't, wasn't there when I, came up, uh, when I came upon it. I looked at it. I, I, I took some time to just take in, how can I do this? And all of a sudden, I had, unbeknownst me, objects, subjects, that walked into my picture and posed almost a perfect picture. So be patient. So when we talk about composition, you can sometimes have the same image in multiple ways, or a, a really nice image, but there's some things that make images stand out more than others. I'm sure you've experienced that. You will. Like, I have it regularly when I hang out with some of my friends. They'll take a picture, and you're like, how in the world did you get this? Like, that looks amazing. I did the exact same thing. I was just standing two feet over here, and I couldn't get it. What did they do differently? And sometimes it's being aware of what the compositional elements are. So let me go through some of the more popular ones. There's the rule of thirds. And one thing I would recommend, if you haven't already done this, in most of your camera apps, you can actually, um, in the settings, change the grid. You can actually get that grid into yours. It helps me, for example, for um, doing landscape. If you have a landscape horizon, like you can actually get that. And so you can actually line these up, or you can actually say, OK, I, I get the tilt right uh, so that I don't get distortion in my image. It helps. The other thing that it helps is it helps you to understand that sometimes it's really nice to be able to put an object or a subject a little bit off-center. So you put them a little bit off-center, you give room for this. In this picture, we have that a little bit. It's right-heavy, it's not left-heavy, um, but it create, that in, in itself creates a little bit of an interest. So for example, sorry the colors are not coming through, this is a very rich yellow-orange picture. We have, this is a picture I took with my phone, uh, uh, smartphone, um, and it is, in this case, left-heavy with an object and a lot of space um, to the right and to the top. Here's another image of this. This is a black and white image of a beach where there was a house right there positioned. Again, it, because of the, the lines that, we, that, that you see here, the lines of the, uh, not ocean, but the, the water, it kind of has this trajectory anyways. So from your eye, it leads you from here directly to here. And it kind of, you have a journey, you have an experience with the image that you can have. Now, I told you about the rules of third and that the rules of third is a really good thing. There's moments when you can break that. And this is one of these cases where you take the subject, the object, and put it smack down straight in the middle. So I happened to run into Joshua Tree earlier this year and saw that there was a one that was slightly tilted and it was almost at eye level. And so I figured it would be really interesting to do this because normally we don't see Joshua trees like this, right? So if you have one that actually is facing you, has a starburst, it was really, really interesting to get that angle because normally they're pointed upwards. So to be able to occasionally when the subject, um, this is also sometimes done with flowers, 
where you take a very intense center look at a uh, flower and it actually can have a really beautiful effect. Depth and triangles. So I want to talk to you really briefly about these are two, ima two images, not the same ones. And I think one image is actually, they have two different effects, but um, both of them have the depth effect, very obviously. So we have here uh, something in, um, in focus and then we have something that blurs out quite a bit. When I took this first picture, this was the first picture, I showed it to my brother and he says, oh, that's okay, but why don't, you do, why don't you just step a little bit to the left? What we have is here we have a progression of the same line. And so as, when, you, when you look at an image, like you don't travel very much, it's kind of statics, kind of boring. The moment you create a little bit of a line, you now have a little bit of a triangle here that your eye can travel. And triangles in, in both the visual, I mean in visual arts, both in painting and in photography, are good ways for people to be able to continue to run their eyes throughout the picture. So if we, if we make it too static, it becomes potentially boring. By creating or offsetting an object with a blurred background, it allows people to be able to actually enjoy the movement of the picture a little bit more. Here's another example of a depth effect. We can see where it's in the desert and we take an object, we come really close and then we blow out the background. Framing, um, sometimes it's interesting to play with the frame. So if you think about this, when we take a picture, we crop out everything around it, right? So we already do the initial framing. We choose, you have the, you have the opportunity to choose what angle do I take? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? What do I want to capture? Sometimes it's even more fun if you capture a picture within a picture. So here I was traveling and I ran across a doorway and it was really interesting to me because I had this nice ocean view. And it was very, it's very deep, rich blue colors. And I thought I'm in ruins looking through a window to the ocean. What about capturing that picture? So that's a common way of framing. Like it's a different way to experience an image. Um, the framing, that happens to me to be my brother there on the side. Um, it's a little bit dark and, um, uh, over and then it's a little bit overexposed right here. But the framing is we're sitting, in a, we're sitting in the back of a truck and we're under the canopy and so the framing um, is with him and you can also see we have the framing of the body position which ended up working really well. We have the arm being very angular right here. So there's a frame within the frame. And sometimes that is an interesting effect that can be used. There's also this element of leading lines. Um, we see this in nature sometimes. Um, this is more man-made because it's an agricultural field, but, and, it, and it now is accentuated with the snow. But you kind of see here this idea, your eye travels with, with the landscape, like following the lines, and you end up going all over the picture just because the lines end up leading you. So this is one that's a little bit more swirly, but we sometimes also see this in a much more dramatic effect of being able to lead this. Like here we have a pathway. You don't really focus much on what is left and right of it. Your eye fairly quickly goes all the way through and ends up at the main subject. Your main subject is the moon. So it's a journey that you're providing. Your photography is providing a journey to be able to see where you're, where you're leading the audience. This one could have been used, I thought about this last night. This one could have been used for the lines as well. Um, but the point I wanted to make with these two images, um, they're both um, wood, uh, wood. This is not, um, this is not um, produced. This is actually an ancient Bristol pine cone that actually looks like that. It looked, I was surprised that it was that light. Um, but sometimes doing a close-up of a pattern or a texture um, changes what we are always used to. So it can give us a new dimension. So if you have a tree and you're like, there's nothing interesting about this tree, what about finding something unique? What about finding something that you didn't see before? What can you do to actually make something interesting? So sometimes by focusing in on just a little bit and focusing on textures can actually be really interesting. And finally, negative space. So I had the privilege of being out in um, Mono Lake and I was taking some pictures and it was a really beautiful, calm day, which I have not really experienced up there very much. It was so calm that the reflection is immaculate. Um, 
And so the object, the subject of this um, picture is right down here. But I gave it all this vastness to be able to, to, to accentuate this idea of how big, um, when we go into the open spaces of this country, um, how wide and expansive the, this is. To get a little bit of a feeling of that, you take a subject and that is what we're looking, you have the tufus, but then the rest of it just kind of gives you the sense of how big everything is around it or how open it is around it. You can also use negative space in a different way. So I harassed this dog for a little bit. I think I took about 20, 20 some pictures. He got so frustrated at the end. Um, I whistled at him, I think, twice to wake him up. And at the third time, he just got up and left. Um, so I felt a little bit bad. But you can do this. So this is a little bit of a unique angle, right? I've deliberately just used the head. And then I used a lot of negative space, a lot of wasted space, so to speak. But it, it kind of is interesting because it's not just um, predominantly the head. And again, the blue at the top is actually a really nice vibrant blue. It kind of offsets the gray tones that are in the rest of the image. And this you really can't see, unfortunately. So this is simplicity. Sometimes um, the texture of the background here is a brown um, wood table type of deal. Sometimes taking something really simple, so this would be more of a marketing picture idea, sometimes taking something really simple can actually accentuate a point really well. Um, and that can be used in multiple things. So in the religious context, taking a simple picture of a cross, for example, can be really, really powerful. And then if you upload that to Facebook, for example, um, during Easter, like that could tell a really amazing story through the visual arts that you, you've potentially done. I wanted to talk to you, also mention briefly black and white. Um, I've experimented a little bit with that. A lot of times what I do for work, uh, when I take pictures at churches, they're always color. Um, so for me, exploring the black and white is still a little bit of a new thing. But there's moments when black and white work really, really well. And in this case, I think this is a pretty unattractive picture, to be really honest. It's not interesting until you see it a little bit more in black and white. Because when you see it in color, if you look at that, it's also tilted a little bit differently, but your eye goes to the green and not to the lines of the roots as much. And if you put it in black and white, you follow the lines of how the tree roots uh, and where they go, you, you, your attention becomes slightly different. Another thing is be aware of your space. This is um, important both in video and within in photography. You want to lead your unless you're doing something intentionally where you want to be counterproductive, you want to give space. So if I'm facing this way, you want to give me room to be able to look into that space. If you cut me off too early, um, and here's the point, um, if you allow the runner um, to actually get a little bit more space that he can run into, our, our, our internal consciousness is a little bit more happy with having more space in the direction of where the movement is going to be than if we just cut off the movement right where we anticipate it will continue to go. So those are some tips on composition. Um, I wanted to share maybe just a few things. Um, when you deal with photos, um, you can do quite a bit of things within your photo app. Um, I mentioned earlier there's filters that you can actually have in your camera, in your native camera app. Some of them I typically to be really honest, I'm not a fan of filters. I think they actually do more distortion a lot of times. I'd rather have a clean image and do the filters in a post, um, post app. One of my favorite apps, and this is pretty much the only app I use, um, but there's several that I've tried to use and I have used in the past, but Snapseed is my favorite photo ad editing app um, that currently it's free. You don't have to pay for it. The amount of things that you can do with it, you can completely create a new image based off almost off of that. Like you can throw all kinds of crazy filters on it and you can also um, be very conservative with your image. Snapseed has that whole gamut of things. But find a camera a photo editing app um, that allows you to be able to, to edit a little bit. Let me just say this. Um, I, I have not uploaded any of my pictures to Instagram from my phone, but I've read about the element that if you do that, you should at minimum raise the sharpness by 15% because um, um, 
Instagram kind of takes away a little bit of that crispness of that image. So if you want to actually re retain that crispness of what you see on your phone, um, increase it by about 15%. And then I just wanted to show you, and unfortunately this is not going to be as effective because we're missing a little bit of the colors, but these are some images that I was capable of shooting just with uh, a mobile device, um, finding the right frame, finding the right location, finding the right spot. Um, and again, let's see if some of them, it's amazing, it really truly is amazing to me what you can get out of the, the mobile devices these days. I'll mention this really quick to you guys. Um, I'm gonna, there's gonna be two sets of this. My brother and I were walking, this is the same trip where we, I showed you the Coca-Cola wall. We were walking along and there was an outdoor um, construction workbench type of deal. And this is what it looks like. And my brother stopped and I stopped and took some pictures and I sometimes get annoyed because he can get into his own little world and might be busy for the next 15, 20 minutes. But I eventually said, you know what, let me see what I can find within this picture because I didn't think there was anything there. So I walked by it and I'm like, yeah, that's not really interesting. And then I found this hook right here, this piece. And then I said, well, let me see what I can do with this. So I actually played around with this. And it's interesting, if you sometimes pay attention to the details, you can actually do something. And unfortunately, this doesn't come out so much. This is bright day. This is like 2 in the afternoon. It's as sunny as it is outside right now. So I was working with this. There's some problems. Um, I can share this with some of you later if you're interested. The portrait mode is a, as I mentioned earlier, is not, um, is a digital portrait mode. So there's some, some things that frustrate me a lot where y this is in focus, but these are way out of focus, like, and they're the same distance, so there's some, some conundrums. But one thing that you can do with your phone, and this is a, a lot of people I've talked to are not aware of this, you can overexpose or underexpose your own, own pictures. So on the iPhone, sorry, Android users, on the iPhone, if you, um, focus on an object, you have the yellow, uh, the yellow box that comes up. And if you pay attention, right to, to the right of that yellow box is like a little bit of a star symbol. When you press your screen, if you then slide your finger up or down, if you go up, I think it overexposes. If you slide down, it underexposes. I took this picture and it doesn't come out as good right now, but it looks like I'm in a factory with a single light bulb up top because there's a little bit of a reflection. We do see that here, but it's a, it's a really nice, dark, rich image of like industrial revolution type of deal. And yet it was outside in the middle of the day like that. I just way underexposed that image. So if you know how to use your, your smartphone, um, there's amazing things that you can do. And we have, even over the last couple of years, published some stories in the recorder where people have used their phones. The reason why we wanted to do this workshop, and I'll end on this, the reason why we wanted to do the workshop is because we occasionally hear from people that say we don't have a really good camera to be able to take pictures. And the reality is, yes, you do. <laughs> if you have a smartphone, you can do some really, really cool things. Like most of us now have a, a smartphone you are a photographer, you can take gorgeous pictures. Play with it, try it out, try different angles, kneel down, stand up, stand on something, change the perspective of what you shoot, and you can get some really cool pictures.